In this tutorial, we will take a look at adding new pages to a site. Initially, when each site is created from the standard site template, it will consist of one page as seen in this demo site. Each one of these department sites consists of just one page. SharePoint allows you to expand the sites by creating additional pages. There are several types of pages that can be added. In this video, we will take a look at adding what SharePoint calls simply a page. Pages are like wiki pages in that they do not restrict you to only placing web parts in web part zones as on a web part page. Rather, they allow you to freely intermix content within the page. By default, pages are stored in a wiki document library named Site Pages. Any media you add to a page will be stored in a library named Site Assets unless you select a different image library. If either of these libraries do not already exist on the site where you are adding a page, SharePoint will automatically create them. For this demonstration, I will be adding a page to the training site. I want this new page dedicated to the three main areas of training in this organization. So to get started, I click on Site Actions and then New Page. Next, we enter a name for the page and we're going to call this Training Highlights. After providing a name for the page, click the Create button. So I'm taken to this new blank page with the Editing Tools ribbon bar displayed above. The first thing you do after adding a new page is to determine the layout. The default layout of the page is a single content area as indicated by the thin blue border stretching across the width of the page. Since there are three training areas in the department and each is to have dedicated space on the page, I will select a different layout to allow for the three distinct content areas. To select a different layout, I'll click the Text Layout drop-down on the Format Text ribbon. An image for each of the choices displays to indicate the number of content areas and their placement on the page. For this page I'm creating, I'm going to use the three columns with a header layout. So this gives me one content area stretching across the top for the header and then three smaller content areas side by side. So to start entering information, I'll start by entering a title in the top content area. So I've typed in the text and I'm just going to uh, click before that and enter once to bring it down a little bit from the very top. And then I'll format this text, change the size. Choose a new color, and I'll center it. Then I'll do the same, adding titles to each of the three areas below. So I've entered the titles for the three training areas, and then I'll just format these, center them, and bold them. Adding content to these areas is very similar to adding text or other content into a Word document. So to place freeform paragraph text below this title, I'll just enter down, change the alignment to left, and just start typing. Once I decide to add a table, and I want to insert it above this paragraph text, so I click at the beginning of the paragraph text, hit enter, move my cursor up where I want the table to go, click on the Insert tab, and choose to insert a table. Displays the grid where I can choose how many columns across and number of rows down. And there's my table. Now I'd like to insert an image into this area, and I'd like to insert it in front of this paragraph, so I'll click at the beginning of the first line of this paragraph, click on Insert, and then the drop-down for inserting a picture. I'm going to insert the picture from my computer. To select the picture, I'll click on Browse, go to my Documents, and then My Pictures. And this is in the Employees folder. I'll scroll down to locate the picture that I want. You'll notice that it defaults to upload that image into the Site Assets library, and then I'll choose OK. It displays the Picture Properties window, shows me the name of the file, and I just choose Save. 
you'll notice it put the picture above the text, not next to it. So to allow the text to appear next to the picture, I'll have the picture selected as it is. And on the Picture Tools ribbon, I'll click the drop down for Position. And under Float, I'll choose Left to put the picture to the left of the text. Now if I decide to move the position of the picture in this content area, I can just click on the picture. I can move it into a cell of the table. And I can move it above the table. Can get rid of some extra blank lines in here, just like you would do in a Word document. Just click in there and hit the Delete key. Now let's say after working on this page, I decide it'd be nice to put across the bottom area the training calendar. So I'd need to change the layout in order to do that. So I can just go up here to the Text Layout drop-down. And the last choice in the menu here is the same layout I currently have, but it has both a header and a footer across the bottom. So I'll click on that. That changes my layout, adding this extra content area across the bottom. So first I'll insert some descriptive text to appear above the calendar. So I've added the text, and at the end of this sentence I would like to add a link to a general training email address for people to contact us at. And just simply type in the email address. After hitting the space bar, it converts that text into a link to that email address. And then I'll enter down one line here and then insert the calendar web part. So on this insert ribbon, I'll choose web part. Under categories, lists and libraries are already selected. For the web parts, I choose calendar and then I'll click add. And here's the calendar below the other content I had added. So for now I'm finished working with this page. At the top I'll click on the Save and Close button. And you'll notice how the borders around each of the content areas go away. That only displays while you're editing the page. So I'll return to the main training page. And if I want to get back to that training highlights page, the only way to get there will be to view all my site content click in the site pages library and here's that page. I click on it and then it opens. To provide easier access to this page there are several locations we could add a link to this page. But I'm going to add a link to my quick launch list over here on the left. So the first thing I need to do while I'm here on the page is to copy the address to the page. I'm pull the top of the screen down. So I just copy this address from the address bar here. I just right click and select copy. Now to add this to the quick launch, I'll move over to site actions and then site settings. Under this look and feel section, I click on quick launch. I can either add the link to this page under one of these headings, pictures, libraries, lists, discussions, but I think I'll just create a new separate heading for this page. So I'll click on new heading and I paste in the address I just copied. I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Control-V, and then I type in the name to this page. And I'll just call this Training Highlights. And then I'll choose OK. So it adds it to the bottom of the links that were already there, and in fact you can see the quick launch on the left here it added to the bottom. I'd like to reposition the link to this page at the top above pictures. So to do that, I'll click on change order. And instead of this being in position five, I'll click the drop down and make it number one. And now it puts it at the top here. And to save my change, I'll select OK. And now we can see in the quick launch, it's at the top there as well. So I click on the training site tab. And then to get to my training highlights page, I click the link here.